This video was sponsored by Retouch For Me. This is one of my favorite mugs. It has two middle fingers sticking up. I paid way too much money for it, but it's hilarious. We can do the video now. Retouching your photos has truly never been easier in 2024. If you don't wanna spend hours learning all of the techniques and acquiring the tools to be able to do so, then I got you. So full disclosure, I am not a Photoshop Pro, and that's part of the reason why I'm so excited about today's video. I usually spend most of my time editing in Lightroom, and then I head over to Photoshop and I do any retouching, usually frequency separation over there, and I do like some other little tweaks with the tools that I do know and I do understand in Photoshop. In order to speed up that time and allow me to execute this process on more of my photos, there are a few plugins I've been using in Photoshop that have seriously sped up this entire process, so let's get into editing this portrait of my friend Lauren. First thing that you're gonna do when you import your photos is obviously select your favorites. And this may seem obvious to you, but selecting your all time favorite photos from a shoot is one way that's going to incredibly speed up the process because now you're editing fewer photos. So be really selective with this. And there are a few different shortcuts I can give you in order to help simplify this process for you. So here are all of the photos from this shoot. If there's a photo that you like and you want to add it to your quick collection, all you'd have to do is click B to select it. And then you can right click up here, hit quick collection. And now you've got a selection of your favorite images that have been added to the quick collection. If you're not sure, if you're not that decisive and you want to be adding a photo or rejecting a photo, then you can go through and rate each photo based on how much you like it. So just by putting in a number from one, two, three, four, and five, it's going to add a number of stars. Then when you select your filter over here on the right side, you can click rated and then you can select the number of stars and it'll filter it based on four stars or five stars or whatever. Just a quick way to call your photos from your top five favorites. So maybe it's like three photos, of your absolute favorites, and then you have a ton of four stars that are still pretty good. Then you have those categorized in that way. So I've already actually curated my favorite photos in the past. So now I'm just gonna get right into editing this photo. So the first thing I'm gonna do, which again may seem pretty obvious is add a preset. That is another way to speed up your workflow in Lightroom, make your own set of presets, or you can purchase maybe another photographer's presets that you really admire. I do have my own presets for sale. If you guys are interested, link to my website, lizzypierce.com, shameless plug, okay, moving on. So I am going to select my preset linen which is one of my favorites. It's like a really easy, neutral preset. It's clean. I named it linen because the whites look really nice in this preset. So it works on a photo that has a lot of white in it. Then I just start making little tweaks to perfect it because presets are a great way to get started on an edit, but it doesn't necessarily mean one click and done. A great way to speed up some of those little tweaks when I'm in a rush and I don't really know what I want to do. You can actually get Lightroom's help. If you want to take a look at the exposure here, for example, by holding down shift and double clicking exposure, Lightroom will automatically move that slider to where it thinks it should be. Now, sometimes I agree with this, sometimes I don't, but it's a great way to get Lightroom suggestions. With contrast, it said plus seven. The highlights are minus 35, but I think they're a little bright. Let's see what Lightroom does. It agreed and it went down to minus 68. So sometimes I just comb through here, see what Lightroom wants to do. Obviously that is incorrect. I'm gonna undo that and I'll just move the whites to where I think they should be. Even those little shortcuts will buy you back a few key seconds of time that at the end of your entire photo editing process will add up. So now I'm just gonna take a second and make some little tweaks on the entire photo. Once you have an edit that you like on your photo, the natural thing to do would be to move on to the next photo, but you don't wanna start from scratch. So an easy way to speed up that process is to sync the edits from that photo you just edited onto another. So super easy. You have to make sure that photo you just edited is already selected. And then you can select a group of photos by holding down shift, or if there's just one photo, hold down command and then click that photo. And then all you would do is down here, just above where we were selecting a filter and the stars, you'll see this sync button and you can toggle on or off 
all of these different settings. So from the basics panel, you can, I have white balance deselected, but lens corrections, color grading, the curve, healing, crop, even masking would work by applying it to another photo. AI, so those built-in masking tools, which I'll get to in a second, will adjust for each photo and create a new mask for that photo, which is pretty cool. So then all you would do is hit synchronize and your settings carry over to that other photo. Something I like to do with photos is called subject separation. So this is using the handy dandy AI masking tools that we have. So there are three different masks that can be generated for you. You have your subject, your sky, and your background. So first we're gonna select select background and that makes a layer called mask one. You can actually go in and rename it background and we're gonna make some adjustments to the background like desaturating it a little bit, maybe bring up the contrast a little bit, reduce the clarity. Maybe we can play around with the curve a little bit, add a little more contrast there. Really the objective is to make the subject pop more against that background. And so now that that's done, we're gonna make a new mask, select subject. And now we can actually go in and make some changes directly to Lauren. So if we wanna bring up the texture, maybe up the clarity on her a little bit, bring up the exposure a tiny bit. So if I toggle the background on and off, you can see that Lauren is much more highlighted now. There's much more separation between her and the background and you're getting that nice depth and a little bit of framing just on her. So now that we've made these color adjustments in Lightroom, now let's get into some detail work, some retouching and finalize this portrait. So we're gonna right click on our photo of Lauren, head over to edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop. One of the most time consuming parts of my portrait editing process is retouching. Retouch for me is the sponsor of today's video and they've given me access to some plugins that I've been using for my retouching workflow and it has saved me so much time. They are so amazing, so easy to use. So I'm just gonna demonstrate a few of them for you right now. We're just gonna duplicate this layer. You can rename them as you go, but just for the sake of speed here, we're just gonna keep plugging through. So I've already installed these. So if you head up to filter, scroll down, retouch for me will populate right there. Let's make Lauren's eyes a little brighter. So it's using AI to adjust Lauren's eyes. It's calculating and making all of the adjustments so that I don't have to think. And I love sometimes not having to use my brain. So if you can't tell that there's a difference here, I'll make this full screen for you. If you hold down original, original, and that's with the eye brilliance added. Original, eye brilliance. Now if that's too bright for you, you can just decrease the blend mode. And I think that's leave that around 96. I think that looks pretty good. And if you're wondering which part of the image that this is adjusting, you can actually click this eraser tool and it'll show you. And now Lauren looks kind of like a weird bug monster creature. Just toggle make mask up here so that you're not making those adjustments to that main layer. And you can go back in and fine tune it later if you'd like or adjust the opacity and hit apply. Now let's play around with some of these other plugins. Let's do heal. So this is gonna work on any little imperfections in Lauren's skin, which she barely has any, so it's gonna be really hard to tell. But again, I'll just hold down original so you can see before and there's after. So there are a few little things that it's adjusted, mainly probably some freckles and a little bit of some dark spots. But yeah, that's work that I didn't have to do, which is fantastic. And again, just toggle on make mask and hit apply. The next plugin I'm gonna demonstrate is portrait volumes. So what this is gonna do is kind of add some contrast, like a little bit of dodge and burn to Lauren's face. Give her some contouring, which no one's mad at. I think I might actually make this a bit more dramatic. So if you want this super dramatic and super contrast, like that's obviously quite a bit. That's like, that's a heavy handed contour. So we're gonna, we're gonna reduce that a little bit. We just want a little bit of contouring. We just wanna chisel her a little, you know? And toggle on soft light layer. So now that I have this on the whole image, it's looking a little bit too intense. So I'm gonna reduce that a little more. There are actually 13 different plugins available on the Retouch For Me website. Only a few that I have downloaded right now. There are so many more of these that I wanna try too. So to show you the before any of these retouching plugins were added, and that's after. 
And that is a much more high quality looking portrait that only took a couple minutes of just throwing on these plugins and making a few small adjustments. And that is a much faster process than doing frequency separation and going through getting rid of all of these little things by hand and coloring and dodging and burning. So that's pretty impressive for something that you would need to do on like a batch of photos. And all my lucky followers who visit Retouch for me now will get 25% off the shop if you visit now with the link below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope this will help speed up your portrait editing and retouching process because it certainly has sped up mine. So if there are any other tips you guys want to see or any other fun little speed hacks you wanna know about, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video and I'm going to finish my coffee. Bye.